Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and SPM channel. As you know that from past few months, we are focusing on the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering and we have so far presented 39 videos for our valuable viewers. In today's video, which is our lecture number 40, we will be focusing on the differential method for collection and analysis of red data. So far, we have studied three methods, integral, method of half-lives and method of initial rate and method of excess was also studied but that is again included in these methods and today we will study the differential method and among which we will study the numerical method. However, this lecture is divided into two parts. In this part which is presented to you, we will study the theoretical concepts and we will solve the numericals initially and then in next lecture we will apply the numerical method in detail. So talking about the differential method of analysis, let's assume a reaction which is proceeded isothermally in a batch reactor having constant volume and the change in concentration of A is recorded as a function of time. So if we apply the more balance and rate law concepts and combine these, we get minus dCA over dT is equal to K of A CA raised to power alpha, where this alpha is the reaction rate constant. And if we take natural log of it, we get natural log of minus dCA over dT is equal to alpha natural log of CA plus natural log of K of A. And this becomes the straight line equation y is equal to mx plus C. It means that we have to draw a plot between natural log of CA and natural log of minus dCA over dT. And the slope of the line will be alpha as you can see in this diagram as well that we have drawn the plot between CA and minus dc over dt but we have taken the log log plot. So accordingly the slope of the line will be alpha which is the reaction order. In another way what we can do we have to first choose a concentration in the plot let's say c a at some point p and accordingly we have to find minus dc over dt at that point. Accordingly these may not be the data point it just need to be on the line. And then we have to simply divide minus dCA over dt at some point divided by CAP raised to power alpha. As you can see, this diagram that this plot is drawn, the straight line is obtained. We have to just select a point from here, go to this line, and then we select suitable value. This value divided by this value raised to power alpha will give the answer of K. So, obviously, in the first step, we will find the value of alpha. And then in the second step, we will find the value of k here. The slope of the line will be alpha and accordingly we can find k from this equation. To obtain the derivative, now this is the main thing that we have to calculate the value of dc over dt. We have to use different methods, graphical differentiation, numerical differentiation or polynomial fit. And today our focus will be on the numerical differentiation. Now how this method is proceeded? The numerical method of differentiation, let's assume that we have been given the time versus concentration data at five different points. And if we include the initial point, it will be the six different times. And accordingly, we are given the different values of concentration. For T0, the value C0, T1, CA1, T2, CA2, up to so on, T5, CA5. And at each time, we have to calculate DCA over DT. It means we have to calculate it at six points. The first point and the last point, if we just take it out from the equation, we get the four points T1, T2, T3, T4. This may not be same every time, so we have to adjust the equations. But now, how we can proceed with it that dc over dt at time t is equal to 0 is equal to minus 3 times CA0, which is the first value, plus 4 times CA1, which is the second value, minus CA2, which is the third value, divided by 2 times delta t. And this formula will remain the same irrespective of how many points are involved in the system. In the same way, if you look at the last point, dc over dt t5, this will obviously depend on how many points are involved because it takes into account the last three points, which are ca3, ca4, and ca5. So ca3 minus 4 times ca4 plus 3 times ca5 divided by 2 into delta t. So the first parameter, the initial point, takes first three points. And the last parameter takes last three points. So if there are, for example, 10 points, 
Then the last parameter will take point number 8, 9 and 10, while the initial point will always take 1, 2 and 3. For the rest of the points, which are between initial and final points, this is the generic formula dCa over dt, Pi is equal to 1 over 2 times delta t, bracket CAI plus 1 minus CAI minus 1. It means that if the value is calculated at T1, it will be CA2 minus CA0, as you can see here, CA2 minus CA0 over 2 delta t. For D2, CA3 minus CA1 over 2 delta t. For D3, CA4 minus CA2 over 2 delta t. For this T4, CA5 minus CA3 over 2 delta t. And if these points are reduced, accordingly the formula will change. So if you can understand this concept logically or theoretically, then you will be able to solve any numerical irrespective of any number of points. You have to just remember that the first point contains first three concentrations, the last point it is last three concentrations and to find the intermediate points between the initial and the final points, then you have to calculate the above and below value. For example, for point 1, you have to calculate the concentration at point 2 and concentration at point 0. And in the same way, you can calculate it and you have to one kept one thing in mind that this value of delta t should be same. It means that the independent variables are equally spaced and independent variables are time in the system. Now going to numerical, we have already solved the numerical in integral method that is the same numerical that time versus concentration data is given to us in a system of triphenyl methyl, chloride, tritile and methanol system. Methanol is in excess as we have seen earlier and we have been given the concentration from 0 to 300 minute with a time interval of each 50 minutes. 50, 30, 30.6, 25.6, 22.2, 19.5, 17.4. We will just today develop an algorithm and in the next lecture we will apply the numerical method. So this is the data which is given to us that you can see that with the increase in time or as the time progresses, the concentration of A is decreasing in the system. Now, if you remember the algorithm for data analysis, the first part was to determine which of the model to be used since it's a homogeneous system. So we will apply the power law model which is minus RA is equal to K of A, C A raised to power alpha, C B raised to power beta. The type of reactor, obviously it's a batch reactor. The measured variable is concentration and if there are any assumption in step 4, yes there are that methanol is in excess. So accordingly that C B will become equal to C B naught. Once you combine these you get an pseudo rate constant which is K prime C A raised to power alpha. Going to step 5, which is the algorithm for CRE, which is mole balance for batch reactor DNA over DT is equal to RA into V. Rate law is minus RA is equal to K prime C raised to power alpha as we have developed. Then in psychometry, we say that it's a constant volume system. So V is equal to V naught, C is equal to NA over V, NA over V naught. Then we have to combine all these. We get minus 1 over V DNA over DT is equal to minus RA. And accordingly, this becomes minus dc over dt is equal to k prime into c a raised to power alpha. So we have developed all these equations specifically in step 5 earlier in our previous lectures as well. So going to step 6, we have again written that equation. We have to simply take the Nash log. And accordingly, we get Nash log of minus dc over dt is equal to Nash log of k prime plus alpha Nash log of c a. Now that corresponds to y is equal to c plus mx where m is alpha. X is natural log of CA, Y is natural log of minus DC over DT, and the C will be natural log of K prime. And we have to use the differential method to find out the value of alpha and K prime, and from K prime we can determine the value of K. And we will be using the numerical method in the next lecture. This was the example which we have partially solved in our previous lecture, and the main parts of the example is that we have two reactants A and B among which B which is methanol is in excess. We had proved earlier that it is second order with respect to A in integral method but now here we have to find out the order of this system with respect to species A. Concentration time data was noted and got obtained from batch reactor. This is the overall description given to us here and one thing which is to be clearly noted here that it is CA into 10 raised to power 3 is 50, 38, 30.6, 30 25.6 and up to so on. 
So if we had to calculate CA, we have to divide all these values by 1000. And the time interval is same of 50 minutes. And then we had seen the plot which is representing the concentration of A decreasing with the time as the reaction is proceeding in the system. So we had seen that there were different steps that postulated rate loss. We have developed power law model for it because it's a homogeneous system. The batch reactor was used, a mere variable was concentration. Then in simplification, we had said that the order of the system is first order with respect to methanol. So we took beta is equal to one, CB is equal to CB naught, and accordingly we took it to A prime. And then we applied CRE algorithm. We have solved it numerous times. Then we came to this point minus dc over dt is equal to k prime c a raised to our alpha. And then we took natural log of it and we got the straight line y is equal to c plus mx. So we have to draw a plot between natural log of minus dc over dt and natural log of c a to get the value of alpha, which is the order of the reaction. And accordingly, we will be solving it using the numerical method. So now we will go to the numerical method to see how it can be solved. We had seen it theoretically previously, but now we will be solving it that for time t is equal to 0, dc over dt at t is equal to 0 is equal to minus 3 ca naught plus 4 times ca1 minus ca2 over 2 delta t. And it has been said that the independent variable will be equally spaced. It means that the delta t for all these points will be same, which is 50. Now that ca naught is 50. CA1 is 38, CA2 is 30.6, but all these are 10 raised to the power minus 3, as we have seen earlier. So the answer will be minus 2.86 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. The first point considers the first three concentration values, and the last point considers the last con three concentration values. So that is CA4 minus 4 times CA5 plus 3 times CA6, and that gives the answer of minus 0.36 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. How? That CA4 is 22.2, CA5 is 19.5. CA6 is 17.4 and all these are 10 to the power minus 3 multiple. So accordingly we get this answer. For the intermediate values, we have to take the concentration one step ahead minus concentration one step behind. So accordingly, like if you say it as T1, so we need to know the concentration at point 2 and then at point 0 and then we have to subtract. So that is CA2 minus CA0 over 2 delta T. 30.6 minus 50 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 divided by 2 into 50. Now you have to carefully see that this 10 raised to the power minus 3 is with this value and with this value, but it is taken common from these two values. So accordingly, you get minus 1.94 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. Similarly, for point 2, which is t is equal to 100, we need CA3 and CA1. We got minus 1.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. Then for T3, we got minus 0.84. Because we have taken CA4 and CA2 one ahead and one behind. For T is equal to 4, which is 200, CA5, CA3. For T is equal to 5, which is 250, CA6 and CA4. And we get the answer of minus 0.48 into 10 to the power minus 4. So this is how we calculate for the initial point, for the final point, and for the intermediate points. If we increase the points, the intermediate points will increase, and the initial formula obviously will remain the same, but this final formula will be a bit changed. How that we will need to take some other concentrations values. However, the overall structure of the formula will remain the same. So we haven't studied graphical method and polynomial method, so you can simply ignore this. You can simply focus on time, concentration, and numerical method. So the time data is given to us here from 0 to 300 with a time interval of 50 minutes. The value of concentration given to us, and now from the numerical method, we got minus dc over dt into 10 is for 4. If you see this value is dc over dt. So once we take 10 to the power minus 4 to, to the other side, it will become 10 to the power plus 4. And once you take minus to that side, it will be minus dc. So minus dc over dt into 10 to the power 4 will become 2.86. So 2.86, 1.94, 1.24, 0.84, 0.61.48, and 0.36. Now we need to draw a plot between ca and minus dc over dt, but their natural log values. So once we draw a plot, or you can see a natural log plot of these values. We found the slope to be 1.9, and so the reaction can be said to be second order with respect to dry phenyl methyl chloride. And if you remember that in integral method, we were given to prove this, and in differential method, we have manually, or you can say that we have proved it 
without even prior information so the integral method was previously said to be used when we need to find out the rate parameters but usually order of reaction was known there but here it is unknown now the second part is that we have to evaluate the value of k prime so how we can evaluate it that we have to take any one point from this line and then we have to correspondingly take one point from this line so correspondingly minus dc over dt at point p over c a p raised to power alpha now alpha is 2 so it will be square so minus dc over dt value is 0 0.5 into 10 is more minus 4 because this graph is drawn like this into 10 is per 4 so once you take the value to the other side it will become 10 is more minus 4 and divided by c a at point p but it's square obviously so 20 into 10 is power minus 3 whole square it will become 0 0.125 cubic decimeter per mole per minute that will be the value of k prime which we will be getting but if you apply the linear regression over here and it has been reported here that if you regress again so we get the value of k prime as 0 0.122 cubic decimeter per mole per minute this is the excel way of doing it but if you want to solve it manually how you can do it that these are the concentration values and these are the minus dc over dt values from numerical method you have to simply take natural log of it these values and then you have to simply find the slope so it will be 1.4 2.1 2.2 2.2 1.8 .2, 2 .2, 1 and 2.1 so if you take overall slope of this system it will be 1.963 or we can say the reaction is second order with respect to the species a which is given to us in our system and if you obviously want to solve the value of k prime you have to simply divide this value to this value but obviously you have to consider that it is minus dc over dt and it is ca so it will be 15 to 10 to the power minus 3 but square and it will be 2.86 into 10 to the power minus 4. accordingly you can solve it manually as well you can solve it using excel as well so coming to the final part k prime is equal to k is cb not beta and beta is 1 as we have said so it will be cb naught into k now we know the value of k prime we know the value of cb naught so accordingly k is k prime over cb naught which is 0 0.122 divided by 0.5 so it will be 0 0.244 and finally we can write the rate law as minus r is equal to k c a square cb where k is 0 0.244 it will be c a square because the system is second order with respect to species a and first order with respect to species b so accordingly we have written the rate so using this example, we have find out the value of the reaction order and we have found out the value of specific reaction rate cost. And obviously two reaction rates, one was the pseudo and one was true reaction rate cost. So this is how we can find out the rate parameters using the differential method. I hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture. If you have any queries, feedback, suggestion, please provide it in the comment box and I would be happy to answer. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel.